Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts. My name is Carl Capolingua. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia, and it is a pleasure to join you as we again sift through the rubble of the markets. A little bit of a rally afoot. Does it have legs, or is it just another bear market rally to sell into? We're going to try and answer that question. It's over to you. Get your questions in, and I will try to give you my best technical and fundamental view. I'm going to kick off with a cluster of requests that have come through on the social media. And that is basically on the lithium sector, then I'm gonna do the uranium sector. I'm not gonna do them all, I'm just gonna pick out the ones that appear to be the most popular, the ones that are most asked about in these sessions. So kicking off with Argosim, we're not gonna talk about the individual fundamentals of those, because I, don't, I can't remember them all, to be fair, and they kind of blur into one anyway. Um, so we will look at them from a technical technical perspective. On the bigger ones, we're going to talk about IGO, mineral resource in a second. We might actually look at some of those uh, fundamental valuations as well. But I go see AGY on screen. Uh, as you know, I like to find nice trends, nice short-term trends, nice long-term trends. And then within those trends, I'm looking for key specific price action signals to tell me when it's a good time to buy. Hey, but at the same time, after those trends uh, have extended, potentially looking for signals that tell me it's when it's time to take some profits and then when it's time to get out. But the basics of my strategy is to look for um, long-term uptrend, that's the dark green zone, and uh, the short-term trend uh, uptrend here, which is the light green zone in, in the uptrend, but uh, when the trends change, we can see it goes to dark pink. It's a traffic light system, so green is go, orange is caution, uh, and we'll see no doubt a few uh, where we go to a dark pink, let's call it red, uh, which means that really the, the, the um, evidence to suggest that you should be going along is, is no longer evident. Uh, for Argozi, where are we? Well, we're not in a bull market for Argozi anymore. That is over. It's done. It's dusted. We are in something else. We are in more of an equilibrium market, and that's evidenced by the price action, which was wonderful here, um, going uh, this sort of um, higher peaks and higher troughs. Okay, I know I'm skipping a few, but just to make my points, uh, into more of lower peaks and lower troughs. And I, yes, I've skipped a few, but I think it's quite evident, quite clear there that we have changed. Uh, and the only way you can go, I guess, from the higher peaks and higher troughs is through, to go through some sort of uh, equilibrium phase. So we say that this is the demand side uh, working or the demand side market that we're in. Uh, we go into that equilibrium market and potentially uh, we may break into what we call a supply, a supply side market. Uh, and I think that's kind of what's happening here for Argozi. Uh, I, the other thing I need to note for you, uh, if you're new, is that uh, on the way up, uh, these zones tend to act as support. Uh, and then once we break them, they tend to act as resistance. Okay, they tend to impede upwards price action. Uh, might frustrate a few people. I'm going to delete those just so I can access uh, some of what's going on here. So uh, when we get into these zones, and I'm talking about this zone here and even this zone here, the light pink and the orange zones, we're really looking for price action signals to tell us that, hey, there's nothing to worry about in those zones or, hey, you need to be really worried in this zone. So for Agosi, we start with the fact that the, the bull market is over that will you know guide your, your judgment on this one now we're looking for whether we're going to confirm the trend change and move into a bear market and that's where we're at on this one. we haven't confirmed it yet so i think um, this candle here isn't terrible okay we've, we've got that long lower shadow the only way you get that lower shadow obviously is that um, you, you popped up on the day and you see how good this candle is now that is a1 top-notch candle there. Uh, so we popped up, we got the demand side coming back into the market, um, little supply getting in its way, I would suggest, or maybe, uh, maybe lots of supply getting in its way. No, that one there, now I'm looking at volume, you can see. Um, so probably pretty, pretty average there. So um, supply side backing off, demand side asserting itself. Um, did we get some supply coming in here? Look a little bit, but uh, not, not huge. Um, but the demand side did, did hold steady. Uh, this, today's candle here is not fantastic. We don't want to see it close beneath the low of that candle. Uh, and that low there is 32 and a half. So close at 32 or less, I think is confirming uh, this area now as uh, what I call dynamic supply. And that is a big deal. It's a big deal, I think, for Arcozy because it confirms really this uh, trend change from uptrend through equilibrium potentially now into down. 
So let's see how we go. Um, what could save it? Well, let's see it close back above um, previous day's highs, which are uh, around the 35. So, you know, we really do need to get it up there sort of 35 or better. Uh, and then we're okay, you know, and it, it's quite crucial here. I know it might sound like, okay, well, you said <laughs> below 32 is bad and then 35, above 35 is okay. Well, it's because we are in this, this, this middle point, aren't we? I mean, it's line ball here. It's an inflection. We could go either way. So look, above 35 will tell me that uh, demand has come in today in what looks to be a pretty uncertain market. And that would be a great sign uh, that we can push back up and maybe try and reestablish uh, this longer term uptrend. Uh, if we do close really even around here or worse, it's not looking great. And then I'd be concerned about uh, how far we eat into this demand candle. So this demand candle is really important now. Um, certainly if we close beneath it, I think all hope is lost. You don't even need to wait for a close beneath that low there, which is 32. Beneath that, all hope is lost. You don't even need to wait for a close beneath, beneath 26. Because think about what it means if we're now down here. Um, we are really uh, confirming the establishment of this new downtrend. So um, crucial time for our goes. No doubt we're going to see uh, many charts which are exhibiting this sort of pattern. So I won't have to explain everything, everything again. Next one is AVZ Minerals. This one has been doing very well, to be fair, up, up to literally, I mean, that day there wasn't looking as bad as many of its friends in the sector. Um, I'll just zoom back to the normal so I can get a bigger idea, a better idea of the, the longer term trend. Uh, one thing which is positive is the fact that we are only here, um, but the major negative for me, and you, know, you can't ignore it, and many of you hopefully are shouting at your screen right now based upon what I've taught you, is that um, right now this is the species uh, ending trend uh, killing event. Okay, you, you don't come back from something like this, this candle here. Um, so that's it. <laughs> so there's actually nothing more I need to say about this one. This this move is over. It's done. It's dusted. And you may see uh, some bounce through here and you say, well, Carl was completely wrong, but geez, I've got total confidence that this level here is going to be an impenetrable area of supply and the most likely scenario even if we do get a bounce and we probably won't even get a bounce that's how much of a species killer that um, candle is you're probably going to see this anyway uh so areas of support maybe down here but uh, look based upon that candle i can't see any reason why you would still be owning avz minerals and i know it sounds harsh and it sounds tough and, and uh, i'm not trying to be harsh and tough i'm not trying to be nasty or critical i can only call what i see based upon the charts and what I'm calling is based upon clear supply and demand of the market. Um, that candle is so convincing that the supply side wanted out. Not only did the supply side want out, <laughs> there was no demand, it was complete demand vacuum. And normally when things go down, so normally when you know, you're know you here and something was pretty good before that and you get here, normally you get this huge influx of buyers. People go, wow, what a bargain AVZ Minerals is. Did we see that? No, even after that huge fall, very few people, very, very, very few came and said, this is a bargain. And that lack of the bounce, because a few people, silly people do not listen to me on Tuesdays, and they will buy in thinking it's a bargain. And as we break those lows, they're put into 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 a loss now on, on those speculative trades. Then they get pushed out of the market, and the people who want to sell, who are already in the market, they want to sell as well. And it gets really um, ugly from there. So uh, it, not only is it just the black candle that's the problem, it's the lack of the bounce, the lack of the convincing reaction from the demand side to suggest, hey, this thing's cheap. Okay, and if it's not cheap, then you know, what's, what's, your, what's the other explanation? Um, so I'm only calling it as I see it, uh, and uh, let me tell you straight up that I prefer things to be going up, bottom left, top right, forever. You know, this is not an easy market for anyone uh, and you know, certainly not to make calls in. So uh, take no pleasure from uh, being bearish on some of these and to be fair, I've been bearish on many of them for a long time. CXO is one which we know has struggled. Um, we talk about species ending events. Uh, we there's one right there. I mean, I look at that and I can't see any reason why you'd own it. This is not a great candle. I mean, for me, I look at that and I say, that's enough to go minus one third. And you know my system of exiting uh, in thirds uh, based upon the signals that come through. Uh, these two here are not great. Um, blend them together, they get a bit worse. But uh, I think that the key here about these two candles, I mean, 
blend them together, they are pretty bad, let's face it. And by blending, I mean, you know, pretend they're one candle with a common open, high, low and close. Uh, they'd be even worse if they took out that demand uh, candle low there. They didn't quite, but it, it's not great because of the, um, the gap up at the start. But the, the key issue is the fact that it's happening um, beneath the original um, supply event. So we say that supply is building through here. And therefore, uh, with that candle pattern as well, uh, we would then say minus one third uh, exit. And I know uh, many talking heads were telling you that lithium, uh, the lithium boom is going to go on forever at that stage. Uh, not me. Now, here is the final uh, straw, really, because when we break beneath that uh, and the short term trend, I do think there's enough in it um, to get out. And even if it does come back and hold the long term trend, you can always get back into it. But uh, as a trader, I say, look, that's that's for me, um, the breaking of that trough formed by this increasing um, supply pattern uh, is the final third. Now, now, if you're looking at this and you are um, forehead slapping, because this is the first time you've listened to me and you're holding CXO now, um, then that's not the end of the world. I'm giving you um, knowledge to, to use for the next time and the next time. Um, there's no reason. There's no reason to be in it here, is what I'm saying. But you know, if you if you were, then um, that's another reason to exit. And then a break beneath here is yet another reason to exit. So, <laughs> what more do you need? And the market is is kind of shaking you by the shoulders. Uh, now, the problem here for core is that uh, this area is going to be supply. Why is it going to be supply? Because it was demand. I mean, was it demand? Yeah, look, it was demand. A bunch of people got in there, and you have to understand the psychology of price action. So a bunch of people got in here, right? They got in here. Uh, how do they feel here, all right? So um, over here, they're quite hopeful. Uh, and over here, um, they are, uh, let's say, packing it. Uh, this is the technical term. And uh, they understand their mistake. I think that's the key. They understand their mistake and uh, the, the that demand, previous demand area is their break-even point, represents their break-even, represents the ability to undo their mistake. Uh, and uh, therefore, we should expect to see um, the demand that was in there, not all of it, but much of it to turn into supply. And we're seeing uh, the first signs of that in today's candle, which is the last one on the screen. Now, it's very important. I mentioned that today's candle is still live. It's going to change uh, over the course of the day. And some of these um, you know, uh, these conclusions I'm drawing may change by the end of the candle, but I'm giving you consistent conclusions with what's there and teaching you how to um, understand if it does change and turn into a huge white candle, then you would know what that means. Because if it does turn into a huge white candle, it's telling us that the, the supply, which is there has been soaked up. It's nothing to worry about. And we're going to go up and we're going to test the next supply point, the next supply point, the next supply point, the next supply point, which kind of indicates that there is a long road ahead of this one to make uh, any meaningful sort of recovery. The most likely um, scenario here is that supply is remains in control. It continues to target these levels, um, selling into the rally for what is a changing trend. Long-term trend is still up. We talked about that uh, on the first one I go to, but you can see uh, we are in this change here. Beneath this level, the long-term trend is over. We're in a bear market, um, and you have even less reason to own it. But I think um, what we've seen so far is that um, we've talked about, you know, we, we want to do buy, hold, sell. There hasn't been any, a reason to buy any of the stocks up to this point. The next one I'm going to discuss is FFX. And uh, this one is, is no doubt the worst of them in terms of supply events. I won't go into huge detail like I have before, but you can just read them off and certainly breaking through a level like that is not great. Breaking through a level like that is not great. Uh, and this is probably the worst candle out of all of them. And in fact, you know, hands down, uh, that's for me even worse than that huge black line we saw before because it's, it's, it's telling you all hope is lost. This is, this is a gap low on whatever the news was, but then we tried to rally into this zone. The demand came in, the hopeful demand came in thinking, well, that is cheap, but then they got smashed by the end of the session by the supplies in the system. And this is inevitable from here. And you might say, hey, Carl, five inch, it's got great, um, it's got a great deposit. It's going to be earning money at X time and off take agreements or whatever. And I say, oh, okay, that's fine. But <laughs> what's the what's the probability of it just uh, doing this? I'd say it's pretty unlikely. Um, I can see this maybe, um, but not right now because this is all pretty awful. Um, so I can't get to uh, anything close to buy on that one and uh, if I had it I would seriously question why I did 
own it. Uh, let's get up to the, the bigger end of town now and look at IGO. Um, obviously, the bigger end of town is holding up better, but I think it's pretty clear, and I did say this on the call in Auspice a little while ago, might have been last week on Thursday with Koshi, and I said yes, uh, that the trend is changing now, and you can see all of these things happening. And I've you know, been a big supporter of this since about five bucks at Think Markets, um, but now I can't ignore the signs any longer, and, and as, as hopeful as I mean, as much as I love the stock, um, I shouldn't say that. We, we, don't love our stocks. We don't love them. We talked about that last week. Uh, as much as I admire uh, the stock and what they're doing, um, this is probably the most likely scenario from here. We're going to see supply in here uh, because that's the dynamic um, long-term trend zone tends to resist prices on the way down and then uh, failing at 950. It, this could be a, a broader, the start of a broader bear market move. So I'm quite concerned about that one. Again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope, hey, it just goes straight back up and would defy all logic and probability uh, to see a move that does that. But let's hope that occurs and, and I get it wrong in $11. It's not a problem. How will you know? Well, if you see a bunch of white candles in this area, it's not a problem. The market's not afraid of anything I've got to talk about. If you see a bunch of black candles in here, it's very, very bearish. And if we don't even get there and we see the black candles coming in, that's even worse. So I don't think we're um, uh, certainly not out of the woods there on IGO and quite quite the opposite. I did promise that I would look at some of the fundamentals. Um, well, not so much fundamentals. I mean, that would actually look at what the company's doing and where they're doing it. But what we can do is summarise much of that in uh, the spreadsheet we've got on screen. And what it's about is uh, taking the broker consensus numbers, or at least from here to there, from Refinitiv Icon, which is a Thomson Reuters product, and they aggregate 14 uh, broker estimates. Uh, we also have the historical data, so that's what's happened. Uh, and then I do some calculations down here in my spreadsheet to determine whether I think, it's my personal view, it's fair, fair value. Uh, so we do have some very positive brokers on this one, two strong buys, eight buys, one hold and two sells. That's interesting. I don't often uh, get to see sells on anything the brokers have um, because you think about um, the brokers. I mean, you go to a broker uh, with cash typically and you say, hey, Mr. Broker, what do I buy? <laughs> Right, you know, so and let's face it, they make money when you transact, right? So um, if, you've, uh, if you're have if you predisposed to asking for buys, let's face it, the brokers are going to give you buys, aren't they? They're going to very rarely tell you what to sell, but it's probably not as good for business. Um, you might take that cash and, and leave them and go do something more sensible with it. Um, so anyway, maybe I'm being a little bit cynical about there, but you've been with me long enough in these sessions to see that very rarely do we see sells. What a coincidence. And very rarely do we see them actually ratchet down their... Um, uh, target prices. They kind of hope <laughs> that the price will go back up and make them look not not so wrong. Uh, but the top, what, for what it's worth, uh, price target twelve seventy five. But having said that, I'm not far away from where the brokers are on this one. Uh, now their EPS estimates, and I've no reason to doubt them uh, based on what I can see here. Uh, you know, a fantastic year, fantastic year, and then commodity price cycle. Pro, pro, prices are going to come down. But if you look at the average, it's fifty three percent, and that's the important number that gets fed into my calculations. Uh, from there, I need to f uh, determine the risk level, and I, I cannot leave that at low for such a lofty earnings expectation. And given it's a commodity stock, I'm, I'm going to skip past moderate, given how high it is, and, uh, and go high on that one. What it does off screen, it changes the discount rate. So, um, again, uh, you know, a fundamental analysis valuation is all about finding the appropriate rate to discount the future cash flows at. And the higher the discount rate, the harsher those um, future cash flows, flows are discounted back, and then the lower your present value. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. So when I make that adjustment, I get th uh, 13.42. I also need to find a reasonable PE. And if you look in the past, it's been as high as 132, uh, 60, uh, and then down to 19. Look, uh, what would you pay for 53% average growth? You'd pay a very high multiple. Um, I'm not going to pay that because it's a commodity stock. I think somewhere around 10 to 12 for a commodity stock is pretty reasonable. And given that this is currently using a value of 9.7, which is the median of those numbers, then uh, I think that's that's fine. I don't think to make it any higher because it would just make this higher. Um, so the, the point is here is that the brokers like IGO. Uh, I like IGO and what they're doing, and I think they're really cheap. And yet there I was saying that uh, it's certainly not a buy, and if anything, the trend has changed calling it a sell. So make of that what you will. I know it's confusing, but those valuations are just uh, my view of what is good value. And I have to reinforce this in every Tuesday session. My view is completely irrelevant. My view doesn't matter. And guess what? Your view doesn't matter either. All that matters is what's happening in the market. 
don't fight the market uh, with your view and don't assume that the market will come around to your way of thinking because that's probably not going to happen. Um, you are an irrelevant, infinitesimally small piece of this puzzle. I know your mother told you you're special and, you know, go out in the world and you show them, Johnny, you show them, Cindy, but um, please don't behave like that in the market because the market will smash you. <laughs> It'll be your best friend until it's your worst enemy and it's not going to send you a text saying it's changed its mind at any point. Uh, now, let us keep moving here. Let's go LTR. And I'm going to go faster because I can say stuff like, hey, ditto for the last four charts on this one. These, these, look, these two candles are encouraging. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. But look at what we're hitting up against now. And this is the problem. And do you want to fight this battle? Some people say, hey, Carl, I'm in this one for the long run. <laughs> you know, if I could, you give me 10 minutes of your time, Carl, I'll tell you how good this one is. And I'll say, hey, look, you start talking, I'm going to start walking. I don't care. Um, now, it's just looking too hard for me. It's not the worst one out there, but this is just, come on, this has turned the corner. Um, maybe we rally into here. I don't know. What, what do you need to see? What do you need to see? Because I'm not going to be here every, uh, every day holding your hand, am I? Uh, but if we start to see the price action move into higher peaks and higher troughs, that is a great sign we've, uh, back, we're back into buy the dip, okay? And, and bull markets are all about buy the dip. Preferably also, we see that that last trough is at or above the second from last peak. So it is this last trough here is at or above. There's one peak, there's one peak, the second from last peak. This is what we call good price action. So it's not even enough to say, oh, well, we've been going down, right? And then we start going up like this because this is not a rally. This is just getting set, set up for the next leg down, isn't it? Okay. Um, so this is what we call very poor uh, price action. And this is what we call, say, very good price action. So if we see this stuff starting to happen here, uh, you won't need me to tell you because the market will be telling you that um, we're actually starting to get better here. We're seeing um, some of those negatives uh, that are impacting the company um, start to change the supply dem demand dynamics. More white candles. The candles that look like this. So imagine this little um, dip I've drawn there. Imagine you get a candle that looks like this. So it's the uh, small white body, preferably, not essential, but preferably. And instead of being uh, red on red, it will be black with a white uh, center. And uh, that one will be black as well. And uh, um, in there, that's a, that's a nice candle. And of course, the other uh, nice candles are these solid white ones as well. So nice candles, uh, improving price action. Uh, and you know, this rally's got some legs. Until we see that, you have to assume that the trends are going to continue to assert themselves. The next one is MIN. Uh, there's only a couple left in this list. Uh, and I'm concerned a bit like IGO that this one is changing trend. There is potentially a significant demand uh, area around here. Uh, and failing that, I think this one is a goner. Um, and look at the last two candles. It kind of looks like it's going to get there. Um, yeah, look at problems here as well. Let's go red and let's say the problems here. Round number, you may not see this one back above $50 for a long time. Let's have a look at the valuation for mineral resources. So let's make sure everything matches up and uh, let's keep that as high. Now the um, EPS estimates here are even more insane. Uh, so we've got 80 and the PE is even lower, uh, which is amazing again, that it's such a low PE as well that we're using. And it's still coming in, um, you know, really well undervalued and you can see the brokers are there as well so again taking some of these numbers with a pinch of salt or you could do it the other way not listen to me and say hey carl i'm going to use that uh, the, the valuation as a reason to fight the market <laughs> and hold on uh, and that's that's completely your choice next one is pls uh, which is one of the better looking ones in that we have seen pretty decent price action through here. So I like, I like this, I like this, and it's all holding a really nice level. We haven't closed beneath that low there, which is, and I don't know why my little tool, tools aren't popping up, uh, 197. So as long as we stay above that, we're, we're half okay. Uh, it's a pretty shallow angle of attack. We haven't seen the huge capitulations. This is not great though. So you'd almost say that's the species ending event right there as in never to return. Uh, this is a problem. We're dealing with that today, but a reasonably good candle. You know, I, I'm getting up to three, four out of 10 on this one, uh, but yeah, not, not, not gonna get over five out of 10. 
Uh, what do you need to see? We've talked about the price action, we've talked about the candles, um, as in to make a case to hold. We're not going to be a buy on this for quite a while uh, because we'd want to close above that long-term trend zone and, and, and test it and then hold it and come back. And that would be my first point where I could look for a buy somewhere around here. You can see I'd be giving up a whole 80 cents and very happy to do that because I'm you know, make my decisions based upon probability, not profitability. I figure if I get the probability part of it right, the profitability take care of itself. If you want to buy down here, by the time it gets to 280, you're making a great profit. But I would suggest that by buying down here, you had a very low probability of success by catching what was at the time a falling knife. Okay, the key level is here as well. This is where the supply really got going uh, and it may still be lurking in the system. Um, look, I've given you a roadmap out of this one. It's not the worst one out there to be fair, but it's not a buy. Yeah, I can't, won't get to a buy on that one. Uh, SYA is the second from last. Uh, very quickly on this one, it's not doing enough of the things I like. What's great about going through a whole sector is you can see which ones are doing better than others. Uh, and the, I wouldn't say this is in uh, anywhere near the top of the list in terms of relative performance. Now, the one that sparked off this rally is this one here, Vulcan Energy Resources, because they had a, a large equity partner come in. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously took a, a stake, but also um, looking to uh, take some of their lithium that they produce over there in Europe. Uh, and this is perhaps the most telling one of the whole list. I didn't deliberately mean to say it to last, it's just alphabetical. And if this is the thing that sparked this recent rally, this three, four day rally now, then it is probably one of the worst ones out there for getting back into a key a previous demand now acting as supply and then failing there with two pretty terrible candles. Again, today's candle's not closed. Okay, it's not finished, so it could end up better. Uh, but if we close here or worse, uh, this is really looking like uh, the termination of this rally and the continuation, therefore, uh, of what is now, let's face it, a, a well-established downtrend. And once again, we can see you know, how trends change uh, from up through that equilibrium phase, through the supply side phase, interaction with the long-term trend, and then failing, you know, testing failing there of that long-term trend. Uh, that is not a nice one to look at, unfortunately, because it kind of, um, yeah, it's been, been the one that kind of got this rally going. So it's, it's a bit disappointing. Okay, that is the lithium review. Now, uh, this is uh, just got four stocks here on uranium, uh, and much of it's going to be ditto. And it's frustrating that it's ditto, uh, not because I don't wish to say the same thing over and over again, but it is illustrative of just how tough it is in the market right now. And, and like I said, I want stocks to go up. I can't see this one going up anytime soon. I did warn of these. I did warn you about lithium, um, uranium uh, for the last few weeks. I've said, hey, this is not looking good. As much as I can squint and maybe get to a hole, the, the tide's turning here. And it turned. And it looks uh, like many of those lithium stocks where we're moving back into what will probably be an area of supply. And, and you know, those arrows indicate uh, where I think it's probably going to go. And again, you know, if we, if, if I'm wrong and we see, you know, uh, this sort of stuff, then wonderful, fantastic. These are the things you need to see uh, before you get too excited. Uh, next one is uh, BOE, which is Boss Energy talked about uh, this potential break and uh, you can see our scratchings from last week and uh, we said it was getting to that critical level it did break through I don't need to draw anything else here because what we can see is now that the area of demand it does appear and only is in a small way on today's can we see that little upper shadow appears to be uh, offering some supply uh, this candle is encouraging uh, you know that that's a nice outside bar you know, long white day didn't really get a lot of supply remove on it. You can see the lack of volume, that's concerning. Um, nothing in here to suggest that we're going to get this really wonderful rally occurring anytime soon. But hey, you know, high peaks, high troughs, the right candles, back through two, back through 220. Um, I could look at it again. Until then, this looked as bad as anything else I've seen today. So in terms of buy, hold, sell, I'm not getting to a buy and I can't really see a reason to hold it either. Uh, BMN. Uh, a shallower decline, um, if that if that's anything. I can't see a reason to buy it for all the reasons I've talked about today. Hard to call it a hold. And the last one, last but not least, uh, no, it's one of the least in this bunch, is Elevate. And we can see here that uh, our problems are going to be in this zone. Uh, the demand which was there, we know the demand was there. How do you know the demand was there? Well, look, it actually held up really well and you can see how well 
to be fair. I mean, I, I pick these um, moving averages based upon how well they've worked for me over many, many years. And they just continue to do, to do the work. They just continue to do the job, don't they? How wonderful are they? Uh, and I think that's where our problem is going to be around that 45 cent level. If we limp, if we limp up to there, hey, the, the rest of the market has had a pretty good run. That's the last one in this batch. So I can do this. And it's, it's relevant. Uh, the rest of the market over the last few sessions has done this. Okay, look at that. And if your stock has done anything less than that, it's not in the basket that people are targeting. It's not in the basket where people are going, hey, that's a bargain, I need to get some. What does that say about your stock? If it couldn't even go up as much as what the market is doing, uh, that is really concerning uh, for some of the charts we've seen in that we've seen such a great bounce uh, in the market and yet uh, such a muted bounce in many of those charts. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm gonna get to the ones that are here. We are going to um, keep moving pretty quickly. W. Uh, PR is the first one from Michael. Uh, now, hey, we, this nice little segue here, Michael, because we talked about um, stocks underperforming. Well, this one's done pretty well, hasn't it? At least a market perform. In fact, a slight market outperform based upon uh, the indicator you can't see that's on the bottom of the screen, which is my relative strength comparative. So this uh, one looks good in terms of a great start for the stuff we want to see. What do we need to see from here? Okay, if I'm not around, uh, let's see a higher trough being made. We might, you know, that, that's silly to draw a downturn here, isn't it? To actually say, wow, well, it's, it's going to turn down. I don't know where the downturn's going to come, but I, uh, the funny thing is I wanna see it go down uh, before I get too excited about it, because I wanna see how the demand responds. Okay, it's one thing, to, hey, if it keeps going up, wonderful. But I wanna see how the demand responds to a bit of a challenge. Okay, especially when it comes in at any of these sort of supply areas. So potentially this one up here, um, there's a little one there, and we've kind of already dealt with that one, I'd suggest. We're above a light pink zone. Um, so very, very interesting. I can't buy it. I need to see some more um, things happening there. And at the end of the day, it's still, let's face it, it's still going to be a long-term downtrend for a while. Uh, but if you had it, I can see uh, a path to holding it. So that's I guess, contrasting some of the ones I've talked about so far, where I'm saying that I'm really struggling to find a reason to hold it, or geez, you, you couldn't hold that one on the basis of what we're seeing. Here, I think there's a reason to hold it. The demand is coming in, it's exerting itself, the supply is backing away in the face of that demand, that's a good sign. Um, let's just see a little bit more. So Michael, if you're holding, holding that one, for me, again, it's all general advice, happy to continue to do so, but I can't get to a buy. Uh, next one, CYM. Uh, which Cyprium uh, metals, I can't see a reason to own it ju just yet. Look, it hasn't collapsed like many of the other ones, but it is you know, still in this long-term downtrend. If it got above this high here, which is 21 cents, so close above that, I would uh, entertain you know, even uh, adding it to one of my shortlists. Uh, but until then, uh, there's not a lot I want to do with this one. It is still very much in trend. Uh, I don't know what they do. And again, um, you know, there's no point going to the fundamental valuation tool unless they've got earnings or at least the very imminent prospect of earnings. And it's just my tip for Anonymous that uh, CYM isn't going to be earning any money anytime soon. Now, if I'm wrong on that, let me know. But either way, I doubt we're going to get any broker co coverage either. This next one is another popular one here, Whitehaven Coal, which is holding up okay for now. And actually, I was going to say, you know, it was a the only thing I don't like about this, or really quite concerned about, is this candle here, uh, which is pretty close to one of those species in ending events, especially considering we took out this level here. Um, you know, and it's one of those which didn't give you a lot of signals to get out, did it? We've seen so many that did, but that's a, that's a really nice candle there. And then, of course, whatever happened, the market tanks, our Queensland royalties. You know, these are left field things you can't um, you can't foresee. Uh, but it's actually come back really well from there. So we, I reckon we're going to close above that level today. And if we do, I think that's a, a pretty telling sign that this one is okay. Uh, so this close today is at 494. So far, we're still live. And that high there of that candle is 495. So a little, little bit more, maybe even a close above $5 is going to get above that short-term trend ribbon. Um, it's, it's okay. It's, it's certainly one to hold. I won't be buying it because I still need to see a bit more. Let's see, let's see one challenge from the supply side, how the demand side reacts. Let's make a trough, you know, uh, at or above this uh, what was supply zone, okay? And then with the right candles. And, you know, through five bucks, 
uh, with the right candles, I actually could see going a little bit early even uh, from waiting for it to break through that high uh, because the long-term trend is magnificent, isn't it? I mean, we've still got a really strong trend there. So I like Whitehaven Coal. I can certainly get to a hold on this one and we need to see a few more things occurring before we get to a buy. Now, because uh, we will have broker coverage here, and we've got ends, we can actually punch it into our uh, fundamental valuation tool. And this one's going to be super interesting because you're going to see some big numbers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> An earnings increase. So look at the previous years. Oh, look at 95%. I mean, earnings down 95%. I mean, <laughs> you had $100 and then you earned $5. Okay. Uh, and then we fell 391% of that so what you know you're earning a dollar of the original hundred uh, but then we're going to have an earnings jump of 1804 percent because you know russia invaded ukraine and supply chain shortages uh, but this is impressive you know uh, they're expecting coal prices to stay roughly where they are for the next sort of 12 months uh, but then for them to come off substantially substantially from there to give you actually a negative growth rate over that period of time look i think there's a very low chance of it uh, missing that <laughs> that growth rate okay uh, so i'm happy to go low on that because it's so low and then it's just about finding the right p and um i don't know what would you pay for something that's going to uh, have an earnings contraction i don't know uh, and, and and my valuation spreadsheet too honest, tends not to work when you see some crazy numbers like that uh i don't know let's take a long-term pe so let's let's go historical uh, and say something around 12 is probably pretty reasonable um, so I'm going to go dynamic H, that's historical, and 11, there you go, I'll work with that. And it, it, it does come out, therefore, based upon, you know, broken numbers, not mine, okay, uh, that we are uh, fairly valued, I think, around here for Whitehaven, uh, maybe, a, a, well, what was it, 494, so about, about fair value on that, but doesn't look expensive at current levels, given what the brokers are predicting. Uh, next one is PNV, let's have a look at that which is Polynovo, which I still like, by the way. I know maybe I gave you a little bit of an early <laughs> an early bum steer on this one, but it is still coming good, isn't it, King? And I think today is a very good day, and I think the last three days are very good, and I think there's something building here. I still think that. I still believe it. I think you can hold on to it, and I, I reckon if it closes here today, King, let's say, look, we don't want to set flame out today. Um, what's the time? We're past 11.20. Let me get another update. So I've just clicked update off screen so I get hourly updates at 20 minutes past the hour from my data provider. Let's see how that last candle goes. But King, if that closes here or better, because we're closing above, you know, that sort of, um, oh yeah, I, I don't even think we need to get there. I'm so happy with this um, based upon where it is now. Now it needs to stay there by the end of the day. I'm going to go buy, and it is a totally specky buy, and and sometimes you know I go with my gut, not my head, uh, because of this uh, downtrend is still in place. But I just like lo something about this I like, um, you know, even that big big day there where we saw a lot of supply get removed out of the system, a lot of the dead would come out, a lot of the shorts cover back. I'm a I'm a very cheeky specky buy on Polynova today. I know I've put a few of you in it before, uh, but I think I think. We're going to do well out of this one so hang in there king okay king's comments after a look at pnv today please uh oh he doesn't own it yet but looking to end i think you can king um but hey with all my suggestions don't blame me if it goes horribly wrong of course uh from adam he wanted to know about pnv as well one after the other very interesting he said he has a position looking to add to it above 136 wait for the close today adam i think it looks i think it looks good uh from anonymous anonymous wants tgr and ckf now anonymous i'm going to do one of yours because you didn't put your name in Ta oh, dad went <sighs> been watching this one it's uh i oh look at that was that, that a takeover or something i saw this candle i saw all this ah uh, look at that uh hold it if you got it anonymous was all i can say uh, i can't buy it now because it's, it's light years away from my my like her in zone i like to get them on the nice candles around my zone it's too far away from that dynamic support now so it's you know sometimes you have to say well <laughs> i saw it i missed it that's it move on the next one is for brett uh, psc uh, prospect resources now uh, brett i did look into this one because it had the best chart ever for a long time and if you follow me on twitter you'll know that i um, put this in my shortlist 
religiously, day in, day out, from October maybe to, to, to February. And then I stopped because I looked at it and I said, well, how is this chart so good every day? And basically, I think they sold some assets. So it's a big cash box right now. Uh, and, and they're not doing anything with the cash as far as I uh, know. That may have changed since I looked at it a few months ago. But it is a cash box. And therefore, you know, cash is king right now. Um, cash is quite valuable. It's earning a yield and you know, you're paying for the value of cash. And that's why it hasn't crashed. But it's also why it probably won't go up either. And I guess maybe the risk is they do something with it the market doesn't like, uh, rather than return it. Maybe they just return it to shareholders as well. Um, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a complex one, Brett. So um, ordinarily, you would uh, hear me say, oh, look at that chart, bottom left, top right, looks amazing, you know, buy, buy, buy. Uh, but you do have to sort of um, scratch the surface on that one. Uh, another one from Anonymous. I don't know if it's the same Anonymous, uh, so I'm just going to do the first one. NDQ, which is the um, is that the long Nasdaq? I'm guessing because it's been crashing. Uh, do we go long the Nasdaq here? Well, let's have. There's no point looking at that Anonymous because uh, you can't do technical analysis on an ETF. You're better off going to the source, and this is the source here. So this is uh, we see the Nasdaq chart, and we talked many times in these sessions about what we need to see in the light pink zones because the light pink zone has terminated so many uh, fledgling rallies in this one and there's every chance it does it again we saw the supply coming in last night coming in last night pesky light pink zone hey if we close above it that's a good sign okay and we may do that tonight uh, and then i'd be thinking well 12320 is the next level and maybe that's supporting your uh, case for buying into that etf these are good candles uh, one two three four five white candles making some good progress taking out some pesky resistance so, you know, I'm, I'm going to go 50-50 here that that's the low, 50-50, uh, but I can't go better than that. So for me, I certainly wouldn't be buying the NASDAQ at this point uh, because I haven't seen enough to warrant me doing that. What would be enough? I need to see return to high peaks troughs, return to FOMO, people buying the dip, uh, thinking that that's the low and um, any pullback, I'm going to get back in, you know, the right candles are in and around these uh, troughs and we talked about the ones with the lower shadows and and the white candles in there so it's too early stages for me uh, but you know it, it's as good as any of the other rallies we've seen in terms of potentially getting through but that light pink zone is going to be a problem now this one's from amy i think that's how i pronounce your name amy apologies if i if i've got it wrong but uh, amy's asking for vht now this one is in uh, trouble as you can see, well, well, has been in trouble. Uh, from here, it's one of those where I say, um, well, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but uh, why the hell do you own this one, Amy? I mean, if you could explain to me perhaps why you would continue to hold this one in the face of everybody else in the market thinking it's rubbish. Because when you do hold you in this chart, you are saying everyone's wrong. You're saying, no, no, no. Because uh, let's face it, this is the picture of supply. This is a picture of people wanting to get the hell out at pretty much any cost. <laughs> Just get me out as fast as you can. And then the demand side is saying, well, I don't want that. I don't want this stuff. <laughs> this stuff's terrible. And the demand side is scurrying out of the way. There's just no cash there to buy this thing. And therefore, the supply side is so desperate to get out, they're just accepting any old price that they can get. So if the entire supply side of the market says that this is a terrible stock, and the demand side says, no, this is terrible, I don't want to be in it, I have to ask the question why you would own this all the way down. Uh, and you know, maybe you just didn't understand those dynamics, but that's what we're facing. And I don't think anything's changed. That's the, that's the crux of this um, this this story here. It, it still looks to me that the supply side wants to be the hell out, and the demand side, not yet in, at least, is looking to get back in. If there is a saving grace, and this is not me hedging my bets at all, this is a fact. Um, huge spikes in demand can often signal capitulations, but when they occur without the price action signal back up to the upside, so these nice white candles or the long lower shadows, they tend to be quite worthless. Um, especially if you break through those lows, you can actually find that the demand that did come in at this level um, then uh, washes back out and you get an even uh, sharper push from there. So um, I can't get to a hold on this one. I'm certainly not a buy. From King, technical question, uh, what happens when the supply side ends? Do you usually get equilibrium again? Oh, well, exactly, King. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Now, let's see if I can find one. Now, to find one, I'm probably going to have to go back to, um, you know, a previous bear market. And I'm just using Volpara because we're here and you know, I should see it. King's question is, if I'm paraphrasing, hey, Carl, uh, you've told us every Tuesday 
for as many Tuesdays as I've been here about this pattern, about the fact that we go demand side, equilibrium phase, supply side. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, what happens on the other way? Um, at the bottom, do we go um, supply, equilibrium, demand? Yeah, we can do that. Didn't last for very long there, did we? Because we went equilibrium supply again. Uh, but yes, we do go through those phases and, and, and here's an illustration. So you're going supply, equilibrium, demand. And this is why uh, you'll hear me say time and time again, King, is that I'm not prepared to buy that yet. Look, this is promising, but I'm not prepared to buy it because I need to see uh, the signs uh, are coming in, higher peaks, higher troughs, right candles, um, trends turning. This, and, and I've told you, I am quite prepared to give up this much and this was 30 to 55 the things nearly doubled before i can say buy it you must say hey, carl i brought it down here look how clever i am i said well geez you are really clever congratulations go tell your mum uh, because i'm happy to give up nearly double because i know if i get if i if i get in uh, at a higher level with the momentum changing the demand side back on my side i can make this much and I'm quite happy to make that much, or whatever I got out, say here, you know, I won't get the whole thing. As a trend follower, um, you know, you're wrong at the bottom, you're wrong at the top, but you're trying to make this juicy bit in here uh, with a high probability, right? That's the whole idea. You're not trying to get in here because that's low probability, and you can't get out here because you don't know it's the top just yet. That's low probability, hang on. Um, and this is the bit I'm after. And again, I've talked about probability versus profitability. Too many investors are targeting high profitability. They wanna buy at the bottom and they wanna sell at the top, like some expert on TV told them to do. And I say, no, 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 <laughs> just, you know, just get the bit in between. Get the probability part of it right, the profitability takes care of itself. Uh, Chris is saying, uh, hey, Carl, <laughs> Your green lines are very similar to 150. No, no, the um, I don't I don't hide what these are. They're 20, uh, 21 and 34 EMAs for my short term, and my 144 and 233 EMAs for my long term. Yeah, I don't advertise those. Um, I, I tend to only tell people to come and, and hang out with me for an hour. You know, ask the experts uh, because they could be bothered doing so. But I'm not going to give that broadcast that stuff all over the place. Uh, AAC is the next one, which looks fantastic. I think we'll get a pullback though. I mean, anonymous, there, there, there are the, the candles up the top. Look at those. We're, we're going to get a little bit of supply here and a little bit of profit taking. Today's candle in particular is indicative of that, but I'm more than happy to back this trend. There's nothing in here that would cause me to um, even sell a single share, because I, that's still what I, what I feel will happen. And we talked about many times before those species ending events, those supply signals in the market. Uh, let's call them supply signals where I said, okay, well, that equals, you know, I look at that and I go minus one third exit when I see that. Um, there's nothing in here uh, to suggest that that needs to be done. Okay, so the, the, this is all good here. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a straight up hold for me. And I, I wouldn't call it a buy because obviously the candles are, are tipping maybe a bit of a pullback, but I've been looking for a buy in here. I said before, I can't buy Tassel Group as much as I, you know, I love that trend and I was been watching it for days and you know, I've missed it. Uh, but I'm not gonna chase it now because I like to buy things uh, when they come back into my light green zone and we get the right candles confirming that price action. Now, let's go Julian, he wants IGL, which has come back well come back well, hasn't it? So one of the better performances, and in fact, you know, interacting with this zone and not, um, you know, uh, not pooping its pants in the zone. <laughs> I think there's another way you could phrase that, uh, but not, uh, not for afraid of the zone, is it, Julian? I, I think it's a pretty commendable performance so far, but hey, the zone is a problem, isn't it? We know, and we've seen, how many times have we seen uh, where the zone, after you break through it, you know, you come here, you test it, you, you break, and then that zone just kills you again, and you just end up um, in the fullness of time heading back down beneath it. So look, as long as the candles are good, I think you can stick with it, but you start to see those black candles come in and probably maybe even a close beneath that short-term trend zone. It's gonna be rising, you know, sort of a 167, close beneath that, and then maybe that momentum's building to the downside. Look, I can go hold on this one uh, based upon what I've seen, but you are on alert, okay? Sometimes I say, oh yeah, hold, but it doesn't mean I say hold forever. You're, you're on alert now. This, this really, let's face it, if you haven't done it already and you've had opportunities to do it, you are in this phase here of, of managing your exit because it's not going right. Now, if we break through with white candles, don't manage your exit yet, okay? Then you, you're looking at this zone, you know, around there, but that's where there was some demand. Maybe that's gonna be supply, but you're still in this phase, aren't you, of managing your exit because the trend's broken, okay? This is a bull market. Now the bull market is over 
Now we're trying to figure out where, where we're going, okay? So you are in the face of managing your exit, make no mistake. It's just a question of where and when you do it, okay? For anonymous, BHP, who are these, who are these anonymous? Butch, how hard is it to type your name in? Uh, BHP has shocked me. <laughs> it's frustrating. I, I, I was on the, in the media last week calling, saying, "Hey, well, I'm really worried about this trend. I think you know uh, it's gone, it's gone up trend, it's gone equilibrium, and, and then you know if we break here, we're, we're in trouble." And it's just yeah, two 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 great days anyway. And today's uh, a ripper. Uh, uh, I don't know. You, you got me. I, I don't know. Uh, anonymous. I, I buy, hold, sell. Your your guess is as good as mine. And if you're wondering why I'm so confused about it, well, bloody look at the chart. I mean, where's that? Where is that going? I, I just don't have enough cues here to tell me one way or the other. If, if anything, it's vibrating in this massively, absurdly huge range. Uh, and as a technical analyst, how do you how do you deal with that? You know, I think you just you just um, respect that you're not going to uh, find the answer. Uh, and 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 stay away. Uh, that would be what I would suggest. Uh, are we curious? We're probably curious. Let's have a quick look here. Um, and <laughs> say, dare we, dare we, dare we check out the valuations for BHP uh, coming in? And uh, they, uh, the brokers, again, they're giving you that sort of well, you know, commodity price cycle is good now, but it's going to get worse. Uh, so fifteen minus fifteen percent is the sort of the longer term uh, earnings growth estimate. We've got 18 estimates, well covered, hey. Uh, four strong buys, seven buys, nine holds, and not a single seller, hey, not a single seller out there. Who would have thought um, the average price target for BHP 48.25, which I'm pretty sure is the top or end of that range. Uh, and I can't get any lower than that, of course. It's about finding the right uh, PE. And I think 16 is too high for BHP. So that's obviously we use that for a very specific example before. I might go dynamic F, which is taking the future median. I think that's too cheap for BHP. And mate, what if we, what if we go um, just all, just dynamic everything, 10.7, that's fair for BHP. And it, it's, it, look, I, I would say my, my thing's broken here. Um, but I think 10 for BHP and low, I mean, this is what I'm saying. So I'm not saying BHP is, is a bargain here based upon how I would view it, okay? Now you might view it differently. You might say, oh no, Carl, I reckon uh, up to 15 times for BHP is actually really good. I'm still happy to pay that. Okay, well then it's looking um, undervalued here. Okay, so it really depends on what your view is. What's your view? Uh, now, let us keep moving here. Hey, Carl, what do you think, this is from Chris, what do you think of computer share? Is it overpriced? Ah, uh, is it overpriced? Well. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's have a quick look at the chart. I think the chart's great. Uh, the, 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 you know, this is one of the best charts we've seen today, no doubt about it. Hands down, uh, it's doing all the things we want it to do here at the long-term trend zone, holding it really well. Some reasonably good candles. I'm not too fussed about that one and that one. They're not great, yeah, but they didn't take us beneath that. So as long as we hold above that. I'm okay with this one. Get below that, I think we've moved into that, uh, at least into the equilibrium phase, haven't we? Where they, the bull market's over. Um, but look, for now, a solid hold, a solid hold. Would I buy it? I'm not feeling like buying this one just right now. Yeah, let me see how some of the, some of the other things play out. But it's, it, is, it is one of the better ones we've seen. Uh, in terms of its valuation, which is what the question's about, let's uh, have a quick look over here. CPU. Very interesting. I haven't looked at this one for a while. I did call this one way before it started going up. Pat on the back because it looked cheap and the chart looked great. Uh, and you, maybe you're in it because of my, I started tweeting about it and like crazy, you know, interest rate rises, all that stuff. You know, go check the tapes. You know, it was, it was down here. Um, so if you're on it because of me, you've done very well. Not to say that you always do well based upon anything I tell you to do, but in this case, you, you should be doing well. Uh, now the brokers, net income, uh, here, sorry, EPS, 19%. Uh, now, pretty substantial. I mean, that's a, that's a decent, decent growth rate. Um, are you sure, Chris, that interest rates from here are going to stay the same and be absolutely stable without any movement for the next five years? Uh, and if you say yes, Carl, I do believe that. Then you would leave that at low. If you're um, if you're sensible, and you're not insane, you would say, well, <laughs> they're probably gonna they're probably gonna move around a little bit. So let me go at least moderate there. Don't panic that this is not good because we haven't found the right PE for this one. You know, historically, 30s are pretty reasonable for computer share. Um, it, you know, growth stocks, 30s not unreasonable at all. Uh, maybe 20, 25. Look, let's let's go dynamic F and see what it comes out at. 19.3. I think I think that's too cheap. I think that's that's too cheap. Uh, see, 31 is the historical, and if we go the whole thing, we get 28, which is pretty reasonable. I'm going to go 25 
it's a bit of a round number, I know, but I think that's what I'm prepared to pay for this one. 25 times earnings on that growth rate with a moderate risk level, I think is a very sensible way to view uh, the valuation for computer share. Now, how does my valuation compare to the brokers? Uh, well, if I'm at a fair value target of 27.31, and when I go on the call and things like that, I say, oh, my fair value target is X. This is the analysis. This is the, the, the thinking and the, and the rigor I've put those statements through. So 2731, I believe is fair. And actually it's not far that far, is it, from what the brokers are thinking at 2805. So I'm pretty confident uh, that that's a fairly good valuation. So we've got a really nice chart. Um, we've got a, actually quite an attractive valuation there with a dividend yield of 2.3%. It's gonna get better um, as their earnings increase. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's fully franked, although don't quote me, a lot of overseas earnings, maybe not. Uh, I think I think everything checks out there on, on CPU. So you know, we're kind of meshing these technicals and fundamentals together for you to make your decision. Uh, now, this is a fun one to do. Now, not fun if you own it, of course. <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but it's a fun one to do in terms of a case study uh, for Craig because it, it just illustrates everything we've talked about and how you have to take some responsibility for when the market has grabbed you by the shoulders and shaken you violently and said, hey, this is what's happening. I think you might want to know about it and take some action uh, because, you know, uh, yes, we've had uh, ups and downs, but uh, more recently, uh, well, this is promising to be fair, but, you know, flattened out, pop, uh, and then pop. Uh, and then pop. Uh, and I, I, I call this the bouncy ball pattern. Uh, and you imagine um, you've got uh, you've got a tabletop. So here's our, here's, here's our uh, tabletop right there. And it's a table. Uh, there's our table. And we have a little ball. Uh, and it's going to be a square ball. There's our square ball. And we take our square ball and we bounce it off the table. Of course, it hits the tabletop and it has a bounce. We get that. And then it's tabletop and it's a bounce. But we know uh, when it bounces, it doesn't bounce as high the next time or the next time or the next time. Uh, but at some stage, it misses the table. And because there's nothing holding this up, uh, down she goes very quickly. Uh, and then we repeat the process again. Uh, now, what is this? Well, this is your demand, isn't it? Your demand is in here. Uh, your demand is doing a, a commendable job of holding this thing up, uh, but we can see that supply uh, is increasing. How do we know supply is increasing? Um, we'll look at those peaks. The peaks are lower and lower. The only way you can have lower and lower peaks is if, well, demand is decreasing, and that's not good either, um, but supply is increasing. Uh, and eventually we get to the point where you just run out of demand. Uh, and there's only supply in the market and we fall very quickly to the next level. So I think that's probably the best uh, analogy I can use for evolution. Would I buy it here? Well, it's on the floor. <laughs> Great, by definition, uh, that's the floor. Uh, well, is it the floor or is it just another table? All right. Is it the floor or is it just another table uh, where we repeat this process again? Okay. And that's up to the market to decide. Let's not end on evolution. Give me something good. Should we look at Antares? AVR, that's, uh, that is the picture uh, of demand there. What a wonderful looking chart. Um, I know people, a few people have it. Um, do you sell it? Well, is, is there a supply side event there? Um, do you need to get out? I don't think so. Today's candle is still open. We don't want to see it come back to its, uh, to its open for today. Um, but as long as it holds there a bit, I still think it's fine. Look, it will pull back at some stage. Uh, but otherwise, still looks very good. Uh, this has come through from Julian, and we'll say he's the first in best dress. AR1, I do like this one. Um, it's, I'm actually, I've got a, a Stockhead article coming up where I'm going to talk about it uh, from a technical perspective. I still think it's good. I know it had some um, news here. I think the CEO might have stepped down. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I read so many reports during the day and they do blend into each other, but I think this is fine. I, like, I still like the, um, the, uh, the, the overall trend uh, and it's natural. It's natural to see a supply res response here, Julian. Um, this isn't a great candle fundamental driver, but it didn't, didn't exactly unravel here either. So well, I'm happy to give this one the benefit of doubt. I'll go a, a hold here, um, not a buy for obvious reasons, but if it started to do the right things from this, uh, from this zone here. So the right candles in here uh, and then pushing back up, I could I could get to a buy. Eastern has snuck in. Last one, everybody. Uh, EVS for Eastern, which is Enviro Suite, which actually looks half decent, Eastern, isn't it? And uh, when you're looking, you've looked at so many bad charts, it actually kind of makes this one maybe look a bit better than it should because you go, well, at least it hasn't crashed. And in fact, uh, you know, there is some decent demand in here building up and in the face of what has been a terrible market. So I think that's that's really interesting. I don't think I'm going to rush out and buy it. And um, you won't see this in the recording, everybody. You won't see this in the recording. It'll 
be weird what I'm talking about. But if you're in the live event, you can see me now changing the screen to show you that indicator I have down the bottom, the relative strength comparative. And you can see when a company is outperforming the broader market as we're comparing the performance of the, the, the stock in question to the performance of the ASX 300 in this case. So that market outperformance is noted by me uh, and it's appreciated. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to a buy though, because it's just the price action is not as exciting as, uh, as it could be. Uh, it's not terrible, but is it, um, you know, is it shooting the lights out? But it's, you know, look, I can see a hold there, but I don't think I'll get to a buy. Note that next week I'll be back at 1 p.m. Tuesday. If you're watching me in the recording, I know there are literally a thousand people that watch me in the recording. Hey, come in and hang out with me live and get your portfolio questions answered. If you're not yet a client of Think Markets, well, you should be because we are the good guys in the Australian broking industry. We've got all the products you need to trade. You are chess sponsored, very important, especially for your self managed super funds. Great support 24 7. Call us up, you'll speak to a live person, and you won't have to. Uh, muck around with those pesky chatbots and uh, world-class trading app. And of course, you get my analysis, head to that website, up, open an account, you could be trading in minutes. As a bit of a kicker, if you are listening to me today, you get a bonus 10 free trades, the original uh, 10 free trade offer we've got going at the moment. And to apply, head to link there. Uh, if you're an existing client, uh, find us four of your friends to come over and trade with us and you'll get 200 trades. Uh, for 12 months of potentially free trading um, terms and conditions to apply as they usually do again head to the website for details if you are watching me in the recording make sure you hit the subscribe button to remain notified of any new videos we put up and make sure you smash the like button to let us know you love what we're doing so we'll keep doing it apart from that it has been a pleasure chatting with you today hopefully you learned lots all the best for your trading until we catch up again bye bye for now